Island in the Pacific Ocean, 50 miles off the coast of Central America. I have no food, I have no water, I have no shelter, and only limited tools in my bag. Lots of camera equipment. Rescue comes in five days. Lots of work to do. It's been a nice place to set up camp and call home, but it's a real hot day, so I should probably find something to drink. Honestly, I don't think this one's ripe. A little bit of water in here. Water in that one. Yeah. But these ones feel heavy, but I don't know if they're quite ripe yet. Oh, yeah, it smells good. Oh. Yes, that is delicious. Check it out. I don't know if you can see in there, but you can definitely hear it. And this is what's gonna keep you hydrated for the next five days. Just purely coconut water. I need to be drinking a lot of these. Before I get into any more coconuts or do anything else, I'm gonna show you what I got in my bag. This is everything I brought. Right here we got our clothing, sunglasses, hat, buff, extra shirt, and Crocs. First aid in here. This is all camera equipment. Got a bunch of odds and ends in this box. Battery chargers, extra batteries, things to help with the camera. These are batteries to charge the batteries. Drone, extra lens, GoPro, and then my inReach for tools. I have a knife, I have a parang, I have a little bit of paracord, I have a headlamp, some medical rubber tubing, and a three-point spearhead, a bit of 10-pound line, some hooks, and some weights. And my one luxury item is some instant coffee. No fire starter, no water, no shelter. Oh, I guess I also have this bed sheet that will maybe keep me a little warm, maybe keep the bugs off in the night, maybe do nothing, we'll see. That's it, not a ton of stuff, not nothing, but it'll definitely be a challenge to be out here for the next few days. I didn't bring a lot of paracord, but it'll definitely help. You can make primitive cordage out of some of the trees around here. I might show that later, I might do something with that later, but for now, we're just gonna use this paracord. Also, there's lots of rope and fishing gear that washes up on shore around here, so that's also an option. Uh, I've seen ton up the beach already. Definitely very bitter. So the smaller ones, not ready to harvest. They get better as they get older. Lots of coconuts on the ground here, but none of these contain any water. So not as much water here as, uh, as I'd like, but there's still lots of coconuts up in trees. We'll do our best to stay hydrated. There's lots of coconuts up here, but I don't know if you can see amongst all this mess, that's a termite nest. So I don't know if I want to climb that. Got this bamboo pole here, maybe this can... Ooh. 
Oh yeah! Nice! Found this bamboo pole. Probably washed up on the beach because bamboo doesn't grow around here. At least on this island. And uh, this will save me from climbing up that tree. Oh, you know that's kind of exhausting to climb it. Doesn't look that high, but that's like 10 feet up. And swinging that machete while hanging out for dear life is uh, tough work. Uh-oh. Nice. Nice. I want to drink like 10 coconuts a day, at least. I think I hear it's like six will get by because six is about possibly a liter and a half. But it's really hot out here. I need to be drinking way more than that. Oh. Okay. That'll be fine, I'll come back for you. Fortunately, a lot of litter gets pushed up here from the ocean during high tide and uh, kind of sticks along the higher parts of the beach. It's an unfortunate part about living in today's modern day plastics. That should get me through for a little bit at least. But oh my God, was that ever effort to get these down? And it's gonna be effort to open them up Oh, I feel like this is the name of the game, coconut collection. But I'm gonna jump in the water because I gotta cool down. And then I gotta start on a hydrating. 24 coconuts! Half a boogie board. And a toothbrush. I've actually found a few toothbrushes around here. <laughs> so if you forgot one, there's plenty around. There's really not that much water in these things. <laughs> oh, jeez. Woo! Hello. <laughs> I have slightly different tastes. This is a good one. So apparently each coconut contains between 800 and 1,000 calories, which is absolutely insane. And I quite like coconut. I feel like I can eat a lot of it. That being said, if I sustain myself on coconut for the next few days, I'm gonna be absolutely so sick of it. There's lots of ants around here and they love the coconut, so I think the coconuts that I don't eat, I gotta throw them out of camp because uh, otherwise I'm just gonna attract a ton of ants. So it's currently the dry season in this area of the world. It's unlikely that it's gonna rain, knock on wood. Although that might be nice for uh, collecting some water. Yeah, actually, you know what? Let, bring on the rain. But for tonight, I'm not going to build a shelter. I don't have a ton of time, but I do want to make sure that I get a good night's rest. So I'm going to build a bed so I can at least be comfortable to get through the night. This hermit crab is just a little too big for his shell. Bye bye. All right, so I found a better spot to camp just a few feet away. I'm going to pack up all my stuff and move it all there. Found this tangle of rope down on the beach. I have use for it tomorrow. Home sweet home. I like this spot way more.
All right, so this is my new home. It's the start of my bed over there. There's my kitchen so far. And then we got my ant colony in the middle. I don't really want to move that log because there is a lot of ants under it. Um, yeah. That's so much effort. <laughs> it feels so wasteful. But um, I don't need to eat much of those coconuts. And if I keep them around here, the ants will get into them and just kind of cause a whole scene. So, Ugh. gotta get that water. Gotta get that. Luxury! I've got an absolute ton of work to get done today, but the main objective is done. That's procure water. Sometimes it's just nice to take a, a pause and enjoy the view. Oh, it's a hermit crab. He's eating a little bit of coconut. Oh, and same with all the ants. They smell it. They're all over this place. I'm really concerned with how many coconuts are around that uh, are easily harvestable. In fact, I think I got the only tree that was like relatively easy. I'll gotta look a little more tomorrow. 15 coconuts. Might seem like a lot, but I think I've already drinking about that much just today alone. And today wasn't even a full day. And I'm still thirsty, so. I think I'm going to need at least 20 coconuts a day at this rate. We'll see. I'll count them tomorrow. I'll keep track. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll go from, <laughs> yeah, a little concerned about the water situation. That's for sure. I'm going to finish off this bed a little bit and then uh, lay down. I'm exhausted. Yo, ho, yo, ho, hearts like for me. Nice. That. Beauty. I know what I can use that for tomorrow. One of those coconuts that's just starting to grow so the inner core is like a 
spongy, foamy thing. And it uh, kind of has the consistency of angel food cake. It's quite good. But yeah, this coconut was just starting to sprout. Yeah, there's a little, there's a little sprout coming out there. Wow. Can't eat that part. This is good eating though. Mmm, really nice. It's like spongy. Oops. I'd kill for a big glass of water though right now. Oh my god. I'm just going through these coconuts like crazy. There's just so little in these coconuts. That'll do. Oh, all right, I got a couple coconuts lined up ready to go so I can just stab a hole and uh, have drinks in the middle of the night if I need to. I'm gonna try to preserve them though because uh, I only got like six left over there. But I think I'm gonna go to bed. I'm exhausted. Uh, that's it for me. Good night, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Probably around 6 a.m. slept okay at least I got some sleep the ants are getting to my coconut that's better it's good last night I just stuffed one of my dry bags full of dead leaves and used this as my pillow because it kind of got a little cold so I used the bed sheet as my uh, blanket but um, yeah, the bed was all right. It wasn't perfect, but definitely got a couple hours of sleep, so. The leaves really compressed. So what I'll do tonight is I'll push the leaves more to the center, push the logs in, and then hopefully that'll puff it back up. This is instant coffee. This might not be the right thing to drink in the morning because coffee dehydrates but this also might be good to give me that kick that I need to get up one of those trees to get more coconuts. So we're gonna try it today. Oh, it's wild. The strategy for today, do everything while it's cool. Because yesterday during the heat of the day, I lost a lot of water, it was so hot. And that means a lot of coconuts, and coconuts aren't easy to get out here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a little contraption in order to help me climb one of these trees. There's a nice coconut tree just up here. So I'm gonna climb that, get as many as possible, and then I'm gonna make a whole bunch of saltwater stills using the plastic garbage on this beach to hopefully get some more water. I can't even think about food until I have like a secure source of water. Right now I do not feel secure with the water that I have. So water, 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 water. Seems to be a lot of coconuts up there. They're all quite small, but they will contain water. Not as much as some big, ripe, healthy ones, but. What do you do? You get on a climb and you quit on a complaining. That tree's got the mother load. Oh my god, that killed. Nope. It's gonna tear up my feet. The thing is too, in a real survival situation, you could cut down these trees. Though, if you were out here for a while, you would just be destroying the only source of water 
that you have. So these things reproduce coconuts on a consistent basis, so it's better to learn how to harvest them than to destroy them. And besides, they're beautiful too. My goal today is to get 30 coconuts. So far I've gotten 10, which is pretty good. My strategy for climbing these trees has, um, I don't think that's happening at all. Um, <laughs> it's really hard. That's a good one. These are the type of coconuts I'm looking for, these big chunky boys. And I haven't seen many of them, but here's one. Good. Too much effort. Am I worried? Yeah, I'm worried. Three more full days without water. The food thing, not too concerned. The water thing, pretty concerned. Bunch. That is a coconut. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! There was so much in this one. Wow! Oh my God! I would say that was about that much, like from from here to here. That was that was wild. All right, that jacks me up. Yes. This might look like a lot of coconuts and therefore a lot of water, but in all honesty, a lot of these don't have very much water in them. Yesterday I drank about 16 to 18 coconuts, which is three times as much as I expected to have to drink on any given day, and yesterday was only a half day. So I'm gonna collect a few more coconuts for the day, then move on to the next chore. I just wanna feel real secure and uh, know that I at least have probably a day, a day and a half, maybe even two days worth of coconut water to sustain myself before I have to go back out and get some more. <laughs> yeah, buddy! I went absolutely cocoa nuts this morning. This makes me feel real secure for a little bit at least. 
Most of the coconuts are about this size. I don't know how much water they contain, but uh, there's gotta be at least 40 here. Really excited to test out this guy. This is like a big bertha. It feels really dense and heavy. I'm sure it's filled with water. Yeah, just look at the size difference. This thing's a bowling ball and feels as heavy. This thing, not so much. Could come in handy. So this here is sea hibiscus. It has a lot of functions out here and apparently it's quite common on the islands of the Pacific Ocean. So it's unlikely that you won't find it, which is very convenient because of all its uses. For one, it makes excellent cordage when you, can, when you rip off the bark. It's very fibrous, so you can process it down and make excellent cordage out of it. The other thing is it's a very soft wood. So finding a nice dead dry piece can uh, help in making a bow drill set or a hand drill set. So I found a nice piece of hibiscus here. There's lots of dry sticks. So I'm gonna pick out some pieces that I can maybe use to make my fire kit a little bit later today. Hey, this is a scary looking thing. Ouch. I'm so happy I don't have to climb trees, knock on wood, bamboo. That was nerve wracking. <laughs> Everything breaks your skin around here. And uh, it's just like unenjoyable to get all beaten up from wrestling a coconut tree, you know? So fortunately there's a lot of bamboo that washes up on the shores around here that you could just use to poke them up out of the tree. I'm just fashioning two of these bamboo sticks together to make it slightly longer so I can get some of the remaining big guys out of this tree just behind me. Yeah, these are, these are big coconuts. All right, that's it for me for now. I am absolutely pushed. You can go chill out. Wow, that was a full mouthful in this one. You guys are wondering about all the extra coconut. The, uh, the inhabitants of this island absolutely love the coconut and they can't get to the insides of it. So all the uh, coconuts that I'm not eating and only drinking from, the hermit crabs, the ants, they eat the coconut. So nothing goes to waste around here. These will all be eaten by something. I have 58 coconuts. I had about six left from last night. Drank the four beside my bed this morning. Probably had about five or six out there. So yeah, I, I harvested roughly around 60 coconuts today, some, somewhere around there. My goal was to get 30 coconuts for the day. And I, I felt like that would make me feel very, very secure for the next, but I got double that and I didn't even have to climb a tree. Oh, thank goodness. That was a, that was a relief. I think I'm going to jump in the water and lay down for a bit because I'm pretty pooped. Didn't get a great night's sleep last night. And uh, the heat of the day is coming in. Oh, home sweet home. It's hard to want to do a whole lot right now because it's just so hot but got to do something. So plan is I'm going to eat a little bit of coconut, maybe have another coca coffee and then uh, make a saltwater still using these bottles, these uh, plastic bottles I found on the beach and then get a bow drill set together. Second coffee. That's how you make a coconut coffee. Yeah. <laughs> If 
found this one. This might actually be water. I don't know if this is the tank or what. That's actual water. That's actual water. I'm keeping that. I don't know how good that is for you, but that's actual water. <laughs> I'm keeping that one. That's awesome. Yum. All right, I got eight of these small cups. I'm gonna go wash them out, fill them with seawater. Oh my God, this sand's hot. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna get my shoes. Ooh, oh. Now I just fold the sides in on the plastic here. Folded the inside of the two liter bottle inside of itself. Inside that bottle is a, a cup of water, salt water. The sun will beat down on this, evaporate that salt water, and then pure water will condense on the outside and hopefully drip down into the little catch basin that I made around the sides there. It's at least the theory. Got four going so far. Uh, I have to find some more Coke bottles because uh, the other ones weren't working, so. Do that now. Yay! So I found this water in that pile of trash. It smells good, it tastes good. Maybe there's bacteria growing in it from all the sun. Maybe there's plastics leaching into it from the sun. I'm gonna just like sip it a little bit and then see how it makes me feel. It sure as hell tastes really good. <laughs> it tastes really good. I love coconut water. I really do. But good old fashioned water can't be beat. So we're going to save that for now. No shortage of snails. Need those. That's good. Ooh, slippery. Be careful. This here is what I'm looking for, limpets. Ooh, suction himself to the rock. That is one big limpet. Come on, come on. All right, tide's coming in. Time to head back. Limpets. This is that piece of sea hibiscus I found earlier. I'm gonna see if I can get a nice, nice chunk out of it that I can uh, turn into a, a bow drill set. All right. This knife was razor sharp a few minutes ago. I uh, kind of dinged it up trying to get at those limpets.
So this is the bow for my bow drill and I'm using paracord for the string. There's lots of rope all over the beach that's washed up from probably fishing operations. So you could use that. The other alternative would be to use natural fibers. The hibiscus bark is uh, very, um, very fibrous and you can actually use this, though it's not as resilient as 550 strength paracord. So. I'm gonna use the coconut as the bearing block on the top. And uh, yeah, should, should, should be good to go. Hopefully. Coconut from the ground that's been open for a while and the fibers in it are absolutely great for fire starter. Coconut burlap, this will also be excellent for starting this fire. Are you starting to burn down into it? Now we make the notch. Popping up, buddy. Great. Excellent. <laughs> That's a good feeling. Woo! <laughs> As a reward for getting the fire going, I'm gonna open bowling ball coconut. The biggest 
baddest coconut thing actually weighs as much as a bowling ball. Woo! Oh my god, it's so warm. Wow, there's a lot of juice in there. Oh yeah. Mm. Wow. Ah. Actually so much in there it felt like too much. That was a healthy coconut. Holy moly. Let's see how much evaporation has taken place. Oh, definitely a sip in there. Unless that's just seawater, because I didn't clean this out or didn't shake this out enough. A little seawater, but yeah, that's good water. little waters I'm getting from these, it is nice to have actual water and not coconut water. Ugh. That was gross. Ugh. Salt water. Honestly, if you do like, if you do like 200 of these, you'll have, probably have enough water to get you through the day. <laughs> Alright, well that kind of worked, but uh, I'd say I got like that much of a water bottle <laughs> full. So nice though. Anyways, I'm gonna leave this out here probably for two days now, see how much water I can collect. All right, this is the part of the video where we graciously thank today's video sponsor, because without them, this video would not be possible. So thank you guys for watching and thank you Headspace for sponsoring this video. Headspace is a meditation app that I've been using for about eight months. I rediscovered meditation just before that because I was having these negative reoccurring draining thoughts. Ruminating thoughts, negative invasive ruminating thoughts. And I would just get stuck in these thought patterns and they would just loop, 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 loop. And it was clear to me that I just didn't have any control over the way my brain worked. And so I turned to meditation as a way of training my brain. But it wasn't until I found Headspace that my learning deepened and it accelerated because I had a program and a teacher on the Headspace app. And while I'm not having the same negative thoughts that I was about a year ago, largely thanks to meditation, I'm still having at the end of the day kind of desires to wind down and decompress and that's why I turned to meditation. I've really been enjoying the creativity bundle. It reminds me of this meditation that my mom did with me when I was younger that I found to be quite profound and uh, very powerful. Anyways, if anybody's interested in learning about meditation, and I feel like most people should be interested in learning about it, there's no better way of doing that than through Headspace. And if you use the link down below or the QR code somewhere on the screen, you get a 60-day free trial 
with your download. So go check him out, guys. Huge thank you to Headspace for sponsoring this video, and uh, thanks everybody for watching. You can spend the whole day, be a week trying to solve a particular problem, and then all of a sudden you stop thinking about it, and there's the answer. Just closing the eyes as you just sink back into the space around you, just starting to become more aware of the different physical senses. All right, it just hit me how hungry I am. Let's go cook those limpets. Maybe eat some coconut. Bunch of limpets, limpets. All right, here we go. Here's the inside of the limpet. It's a little back part you don't want to eat. It's kind of like the gross sack of garbage and poop. So you cut that off. Chunky piece of meat. Quite chewy. Mmm. I quite like that. Oh, a little, definitely shellfish. I think the sand fleas are out today. Okay. Okay. I could eat these. These are pretty good. Not bad. And what's nice about them is they're they're salted well because they're from the ocean. I did that again. Not bad. No point in being hungry. The tide is low and there's limpets galore out on those rocks. So let's go get a few more. What's that thing? Yeah, that thing looks wild. Okay, I got like 10 more. So I'm gonna head back, cook these up. Round two. Oh, I forgot. I uh, grabbed two snails. Let's cook those up, see what those are like. Let's eat a whole one. With the, all the grossness in the back too. Okay, no. Ew. This is my life now. Eating shellfish in the sand in the Pacific Ocean. Comes with a little shot glass too. Snail is boiling. Alright, this is the snail. I don't think I'm gonna like it, but... Oh. oh, I love it. This is so good. Oh, I don't even think it's that late, but I'm exhausted, so I'm gonna at least lay down for now. Probably drift off to sleep. So, see you guys in the morning. Good morning. Just about as poor of a sleep as you can get. <laughs> Oof. This bed needs to be fixed. All the all the bedding is compacted so it's rock hard. And uh, last night I had a coconut right beside my bed ready to go. All I had to do was poke through the pulp and and drink the drink the water. So I, I check it out, poke through, go to drink it, and as I'm drinking it, I start feeling all these stings around my eyes and in my mouth. 
and I, I didn't I didn't look, but there was um, there was thousands of or even just hundreds of little ants on it. And they thought I was attacking them, so they just started stinging me. So that was unsettling. Ugh. Anyways, it's like the sun's about to come up, so I might as well get started on the day, beat the heat of the day. Six coconuts. Damn, fleas are just absolutely annihilating me today. Ooh, they're sand fleas are just tiny little buggers. You can barely see them, and they just leave all these little welts on you. Oh, there we go, coconut coffee. Just as disgusting as I remember. <laughs> oh. It's hard to drink these without spilling on yourself sometimes. 35 coconuts left from the 58 I got yesterday. I, I drank a lot of coconuts yesterday. Like I'll definitely need to pick some more up tomorrow. Pick some up, I mean, smack them out of trees. Breakfast is served. Coconut. We're gonna go fishing this morning till we can't. By that I mean that it gets too hot. If you've watched this channel before, you, you would have seen me do this. I'm just making a bottle line. Usually I use a stump, but there's abundance of plastic balls out here and this will allow the reel to just, all the lines just, just shoot off the reel real nice, so. Get all the sand flea bites. It's just 10 pound test line. There we go, bottle line. I think this is a baby powder container. So I can baby powder my chafe and then reel in some trophies, babe. Oh yeah. Yeah, I did just call you babe. All right, time to head out, try our luck at fishing. I'm gonna go to this close point, hopefully there's fish. I mean, I'm, I guarantee there's fish everywhere, it's the ocean, but hopefully we catch a fish. Oh, I forgot one thing, the limpets. You guys. All right, now we're good to go. Well, uh, oh, I'm on the ground. Oh. The rock is slippery. It was a graceful fall, though I did break my hand reel. Still should be fine. <laughs> this rock is slippery. Got the limpet on the hand line. First try? <laughs> nice. It's a little guy, but 
We'll take them. We'll keep them. That's food. Took my bait. Line to break. Ah, what the hell is this thing? Oh, you know what? This might be a trigger fish because it's got the little trigger right here. Wow, weird human like mouth. He's got like teeth too. Cool, that's a good amount of food. Are we good with this or do we want to try to get one more? Everything I catch, I'm gonna eat. I think we go for one more. Another trigger fish. Oh! I had one on, but he popped, popped the hook out, or or the line snapped. Bummer. Hello! Woo! You have to fillet it. So with these two little small fish, I think they're groper of some sort, I was able to get all the scales off them, gutted them out, but this trigger fish, can't get the scales off it. I could fillet it the way I would fish back home, but I think that would get rid of too much of the meat and it'd be a little wasteful. So I'm gonna just cook it as is and figure out the whole scale thing a little later. And uh, the reason this fish is called a trigger fish because it, it has this, this spike here and as hard as you press on it, it won't go down until you press this little secondary spike and it just pops right down. How do you get it to go back up? Come on, go back up. Get it to go back up. But anyways, that's, that's why they call it a trigger fish. Because it has a little trigger on it. All right, let's go cook. This is an almond tree. We're gonna use the leaves to cook the fish in. This is that sea hibiscus that we used to make the bow drill set from. We did the bow drill set when it was dry. This is wet and green, so a little different characteristics. But the bark of the hibiscus makes amazing cordage. So now we got all this natural fiber from the hibiscus tree. We got leaves from the almond tree. Let's wrap our fish and cook them up. Well, 
on this fork on the beach. <laughs> nice. That's good. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, good. The scales come right off. Awesome. Triggerfish. Hmm, I like that. Fortunately, I kind of undercooked some of the triggerfish. I thought I left it on there for like 20 minutes, but um, around the spine is a little undercooked. I'm not gonna eat that part. I don't really feel like eating raw meat out here and figuring out what happens. We'll leave that one for the birds and the ants. Last one. Might as well finish her off, you know? Woo! Can't have enough coconut coffees. That was pretty good. Honestly, being able to put some fresh meat into my belly feels really good. Those limpets last night were surprising. I actually quite enjoyed those, but just having real fish, real fresh fish, can't beat it. The heat of the day is coming up. Sun's looking pretty high in the sky. I have a few tasks that I want to get done today. Not too much. The main thing is uh, I'm going to fix this bed, make it a lot more comfortable because last night's sleep was horrendous just tossing and turning, just never found a comfortable position. That's priority. Another one is get more coconuts because my coconut stash, though it looks plentiful, finished already half the coconuts that I collected yesterday. Maybe even more as I'm double fisting right now. So coconuts and shelter are my priority. All right, at this rate, we're gonna run out of coconuts by tomorrow, so I'm gonna see if I can get a few more out of this tree with the big pole. Come on. That's a good one. These big ones are the ones we want. Plus bit me right here. I don't know if you can see it. But I killed him. So all is fair in the world. And another one. Oh, I gave that one a good run. This is really tough. Hey. Yeah, annoying.
These are big ones. These are some of the biggest I've ever got, so that's good. I'm gonna go haul these back to camp, jump in the water, and clean out my uh, my new cut with some salt water in the in the ocean. Maybe attract some sharks. I think it looks way worse than it is. Oh my god. Compared to some of the ones from yesterday. Like, look at, look at that. I mean, that's a big example, but it's a big difference there. But mm. oh, actually, that one was not nice. Weird aftertaste. Each coconut has its own kind of character, which I'm learning. Drinking something like 60 coconuts in the last two days. Like today's day three. So probably even more. Some, some have little liquid and they're sweet. Some have lots of liquid and they're kind of bitter. Some have no liquid. Some are very pulpy. Yeah, they're all in different stages of development. So, mm. that was a delicious coconut. Beggars can't really be choosers, so I uh, I drink what I can get. The sardine. Lumpy, very lumpy. Since I've been out here, I've been pretty lucky with the rain so far. It is the dry season, though nothing is 100% guarantee might be worth my while to make some sort of shelter just in the unlikely case that it starts to pour. I've got time, I'm in the shade, I'm gonna do that now. Bad. I don't know if you can see it right now, but there's hundreds of sand fleas flying around my head right now. They are biting me everywhere. Strong little fella. Oh yeah, she'll hold up the gale force winds. <laughs>
All right, roofing's done. It's not perfect. There are definitely holes. You can see up over here some holes in the top, but it's pretty cool. Bring on the rain. Even when I'm resting and taking a nap, I'm just, it still feels like I'm like doing something. Probably because it's very draining mentally. I know that after this is all said and done, and I have like a nice hot shower, no, a nice cold shower, and some, some real grub. I'm gonna look back and think how cool this experience was. I think I'll still probably like coconut after this. Even though I've already drank 60 coconuts. <laughs> At least 60 coconuts. So I know I built, I just built that big old shelter, but I'm feeling little creepy crawlies all over me. And uh, out here it's really nice and windy. So I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna try to sleep out here. Maybe even, well, we'll see. What happens? Oh, in the moon. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's a whoa. You're a big crab. You're a big boy. What are you doing? I'm right by my head. Look, my pillows are literally right here. And this freaking crab is just sneaking up on me. Oh. Can't be gone with you. I'm laying here and all I hear is this like scampering right here. I look up and it's like, oh, big boy. The whole, whole, whole beach is alive right now. It's a full moon. Oh my God, there's a lot of them. Get out of my bed. Good morning everyone. I slept pretty well, all things considered. I uh, definitely got much more sleep tonight than I did on the first two nights. Even with all these crabs running around. I would be more helpful to build some walls instead of a roof. I didn't really know. Anyways, we're gonna get up a little early, have some cocoa coffee, and go fishing. Sound good? All right then. These weren't all here last night. These are crab holes. I don't know if they came from them or are in them now. Yeah, quite the scene last night. So I'm sure some of you guys are wondering how I learned some of these skills and, and was able to adapt to being here on an island where I'm, when I'm from Canada and I've only ever done videos in uh, Canada or North America. Well, I signed up for a course called Desert Island Survival because uh, I learned that uh, a survivalist that I've been following on YouTube for a while, Tom McElroy, i.e. Wild Survival, that's his, uh, that's what he goes by, Tom McElroy Wild Survival. He was teaching this Desert Island course and I uh, figured why not come out here and uh, enhance my skills and that's how I find myself doing this five day, no food, no water, no shelter outing. Learned a lot from Tom. So grateful to uh, 
to be out here on this excursion. It taught me a lot, though this coconut coffee, I picked this up on my own. Thank you very much. This is a Xander Budnick special right here, which I'm sure some of you guys kind of guessed. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a pro move right there. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention last night, last night when I uh, just woke up in the middle of the night and I felt like I had to puke, I, I had like quite a bit of like stomach ache and I felt nauseous and, and dizzy, but I didn't end up vomiting, which is good. But uh, this morning, I've just been having like, uh, well, diarrhea. I've been having a lot of diarrhea, which is not good, so. Hopefully I didn't eat anything bad. Hopefully it's just like too much coconut and my body's just processing it that way. But uh, I'll just keep monitoring it. Problem with having diarrhea though is uh, dehydration. So I came back to camp because I forgot my fish hooks. <clears throat> and, um, and while I'm hungry, I feel nauseous. So I keep on getting little waves of nausea. Not super significant ones, but small ones. And my worries is that I gave myself food poisoning from that trigger fish that was a little undercooked yesterday. So that wouldn't be good. I'm just gonna lay down for a little bit and uh, see, if, see if this will go away. On a trigger fish! Whoa! I want him to wear out a little bit. Whoop! 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 One fishy! I think the trick with these limpets is to just use a little piece of it because then they go for the entire bit and uh, they get the hook with it as opposed to them just ripping on the entire larger piece off, if you know what I mean. Whoa! Oh! That was so cool! I saw him coming for it, and so I was baiting him, and he just like <laughs> snaps it, but he snapped the whole thing somehow. That was really interesting. Oh, we still got it. Okay, woo! We'll see if he stays in there or tries to escape. That's a giant slug. So I don't know anything about those things. Therefore, I'm not gonna eat it or touch it. Let's get that last little fish out, spatch it, bring it back to camp, and uh, cook it up. <laughs> Once again on the ground. Oh, this stuff is slippery. The fall was graceful though, and we're okay. Limp it. Honestly, I think limpets are my favorite. Or I'm really hungry. 
pretty good. After this, I gotta go get some more coconuts. I have about 15 left for the next 24 hours, which is not enough. Considering also that I, uh, I'm flushing liquids really quickly right now, which is not good. So I definitely wanna get, get a lot of liquids stored up, just in case I'm sick. I don't, I don't know if I'm sick or not, but I could be. That trigger fish yesterday, I don't think I cooked all the way through. And uh, yeah, it'd be awful to get food poisoning. Or have it. I've had this thing in here for a good little while now. Should be cooked. This one's for the birds and the crabs. It's a good amount of meat. A little overcooked, but that's safe. Honestly, like the fact that I undercooked that fish yesterday and uh, still ate it was kind of a bad call. Cause like getting sick out here, getting food poisoning out here would lead to dehydration and vomiting, which leads to death. But like actually like no good. All right, tide's coming in. I got a little bit of time until uh, the rocks over there will be inaccessible. So I'm gonna head out and get some limpets for dinner. All right, I got about 16 limpets. That should be an okay amount for dinner. Honestly, I could be out here for a little longer collecting more, but it's really hot and I'm pretty exhausted. So I just want to get back and lay down and chill out for a bit. No, damn, so much water. We're down to about seven coconuts, so I gotta go get some more. Wow. Big guys. Nice. Whoa. Nice. All right, two more good ones. So behind me is the manchineel tree and it produces a fruit that apparently is quite tasty until it kills you. <laughs> the manchineel is also known as the death apple tree and uh, apparently when you eat it, it tastes really good and then it becomes really peppery and then it closes your throat and you asphyxiate <laughs> or, or it kills you somehow. But uh, yeah, super horrifying to think about that these are around here and they, they taste good on first bite. Also, apparently some of Columbus's men turned this into a jam and about 12 of them died on one expedition. I believe that's right. I might be making that up. Anyways, don't eat the fruit from the death apple tree. It's the middle of the day. The sun's beating down. It's hot as heck. We've had about three coconut coffees and a whole bunch of shellfish. And it's time to take a number two. So let me show you guys a couple tips and tricks on how to take a number two here on a deserted island. Dig a hole about six to 10 inches deep, do the old power squat over it and let her rip. 
I use hibiscus leaves to clean myself up, bury it all down, and uh, some crabs will probably come along and eat all that yummy goodness at another date. So uh, the other option is once you're done with the hibiscus, you can head down to the ocean and clean yourself up using a bit of water. If you want to freshen up a little bit more, you can come down to the ocean, give yourself the old splash of roux, and you're good to go. The final thing, though, if you're bold enough, is you can just go right in the ocean. I usually swim out a few feet, pull down my pants, hang out on my back and kind of paddle, and I just let her out as I paddle backwards. Might seem kind of odd doing it right in the water, but the fish love it. The ocean's massive and uh, it just becomes part of nature. Mind you, I would never do this in a populated area. That's, uh, yeah, that's a little different. Anyways, those are my poop tips for the day. If you guys enjoyed those poop tips, leave a like, maybe subscribe for some more poop tips in the future. Ooh, there's quite a bit of water in there. Oh yeah, that, oh my God. Way better the second time. I miss water. I miss just straight up water. It's really good. It's this one just because I want to show you guys how much it created. When I drink out of these, I like to think about all the other people's mouths that have been on these before me. Oh yeah, some of these were excellent. Okay, well that works. Got about, yeah, about a mouthful. <laughs> I was literally just laying there and I sit up and look who's under here. A friggin' crab. They're just like everywhere. Right underneath my bed. Come on, buddy. I got gotcha. you. I just can't have them sleeping underneath me while I'm trying to take a nap. Alright, goodbye. No, we're not fighting anymore, dude. going home tomorrow or at least leaving and while I'm really looking forward to some real food mainly like french fries and chocolate at the same time we're individually I'm gonna miss this place the, the, this entire beach was to myself beautiful ocean all the wildlife. This place is so full of life. Yep, I'll miss this place. This is a real journey. It's not over yet, I still gotta battle the crabs tonight. Oh God! So cool. Save that for a sec. That one bit's done. Whoa. Bro. Just high tailed it in here.
Okay, little guy. Okay. Good little crabby. Good little crabby. What you what you doing? Oh, look, this guy. He made a home underneath my cutting board. The whole beach is covered in in the crabs. I had a pot, I had to go around picking them up and we'd have a big crab feast in the morning. But uh I don't know these guys be. Okay buddy. <laughs> I, turn I turn around and this guy is just like he's just looking up at me. Go away, please. All right, oh, good morning. Sun's coming up, so I'm gonna get up too. Every time I get up, they scamper away, but they're they're burrowing around the, the edges of the bed here. This is wild. There's not an inch of ground that doesn't have crab markings on it. It's all crab. <laughs> That's my fresh tracks. These are all crab holes. Looks like it goes all the way up the beach too. Wow, it's pretty crazy. Last three coconuts. First and maybe only coconut coffee of the day. Ah, delicious. I'm gonna miss this place. I'm excited to leave. I'm, exci I'm very excited to leave, but I, I will miss it. That was a pretty amazing experience. Five days, no food, no water, no shelter. And while it didn't rain, it probably would have been nice. Would have been a really easy way of collecting water. Getting those coconuts out of those trees was a pain in the butt and I'll admit, I think it was uh, the morning of day two where I thought that maybe this wasn't possible. Uh, I started climbing those trees, or at least attempted to, and it's just, I wasn't getting my myself up any of those coconut trees. So finding that big stick really helped uh, procure water from coconuts. And once I got a big stash of them, I felt a lot more comfortable being out here. And boy, was it ever a lot of work to crack open coconuts to drink. Just sometimes just a little sip of water. That was uh, tedious, tedious work. I know I'm gonna go back home and just appreciate the fact that I can just drink water right from my tap using a glass, as opposed to taking out a machete every time I need a drink. Lots of food, food was in abundance. I don't feel too hungry. Rescue boat's gonna be here in about an hour. Pretty excited to be picked up and, uh, but in all honesty, I really, really like it out here. Like this place just has such beauty and so much life. It's remarkable. Definitely excited to uh, have a shower, clean the gunk from under my fingernails, all the crap out of my hair and get rid of all the scratches and itches and cuts and nicks and sand flea bites on my legs. Yeah, amazing trip, I'm really grateful for this one. Time to tear down camp and get ready for pickup. Hope you guys enjoyed that one as much as I did. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Four, five. 94 coconuts that were here. That doesn't even include all the ones that I ate out when I was uh, harvesting them. So that's well over 100 coconuts. Wow. Going home!